My name is Kor, and this is Half Dice Will Travel. Isn't it awoken in your guild hall? It is another days of work, and as you make your way down into the forge, uh, one of your guildmates comes up to you with a purchase order. And on it, on a small note, there is a low-level request to forge a family blade, a dagger, uh, with inscribed words in it. And it has to say, Arive Tutum. You, however, do not have any of the required materials and are uh, obliged slash needed to gather it at the guild warehouse over on Tharchin Street. Uh, so I take the, note, take the note and I go, oh, all right, I'm on it. And I head over to, uh, can you plink the street? Uh, yep. Farleyville Street. Ah, okay. Oh, well, that's very close. Yeah. It's just on, a, on the other side of the market. Okay. So as you are walking down the streets of Waterdeep, um, you can make me a perception check. Twenty-two. Okay. Um, so what you have come to know as quite a calm and trade way filled uh, uh, street, bizarre street, trader's way, it all holds like various merchants that come there to show their wares. You start noticing that for some reason there is a certain level of tension on the street. You see a couple of shady figures. Uh, you see a couple of groups of people talking to each other. You see certain pockets of people moving around in ways that don't have anything to do with um, with any kind of merchantile business. Um, it's not something you feel threatened by, but it's something that stands out to you. Uh, are the city guard there in their usual numbers? Yep. Are they keeping a watchful eye at stuff? Um, they're they're keeping a watch line and the general populace. Uh, should be fine. I uh, slightly move my uh, pouch with gold around so it's harder to pick pockets. Okay. And then I continue on my merry way. Okay. So as you come to the guild warehouse, um, it's a large building uh, filled to the brim with materials. Uh, even like there are a couple of windows outside that you can see that are just filled with all kinds of like planks and iron nuggets and all kinds of stuff just laid out. There's hardly any light that will probably get into the actual building because it's just stuffed with stuff. Um, and as you open a door, it's a large wooden door. You, you crank it, it swings open, and behind a small counter, there's a. Half I assume I know his name. Uh, you don't. Well, is he new? He is. For you, he's new, yeah. Huh. Uh, so I move out to, over to the counter and I place down my introductional letter from my guild as to identify myself. Now, oi, I need some stuff for a pretty dagger. Oh, oh, hello. Who are you then? I'm Hjelder. <laughs> Bless you. I'm, uh, I'm Hebo. Hebo Trifoot. Yeah, you're a Hemo indeed. Yeah, Hebo with a V. As in oh. Stiggy. Oh, very sorry. Uh, could you collect what I need? Um, yeah, let's check all your papers, is it? He grabs your, your sheets of paper, starts rummaging through. So, okay, so you, okay, so you need a help. Ah, uh, you need a couple of iron, iron ores. Okay, you smell this yourself. You got a smelting license. Uh, yeah, I'm part of the guild of uh, fine crafts. We got that. Oh right, right, right. I thought you only made like clocks and shit, but I guess this is fine. Um, give me, give me a small second. I'll, I'll run down the shop and I'll see if what I can find. Okay. Yeah, just hurry up. And he like he, he runs up, and you hear like his flat foot. Because he's halfling, so he's and they like disappear into the warehouse. Um, and after a couple of minutes, 
I was rummaging. He comes back with like full arms of, of materials. He, he drops on the couch. Hey, that's extremely heavy. Um, I think it's all you need. You want a bag is, with that? Is it all I need? Uh, maybe a perception check. That's a six. At first glance, you believe it is everything you need. Um, yeah, sure. Give me a bag with that. Oh, I'm sorry. It seems we don't have bags. We only have crates. It's kind of a hard bag. You want a hard bag? Sure. Okay. Um, I have them in different colors. I've got a, I've got this nice white one. It it used to hold sheep's wool. I've got I've got this yellow one who who, who used to hold butter. And I've got this red one. I'm, I reckon it has to do something with dragon fire or blood. But I'm not really sure. It, it's quite. It's been there for a while longer than me. Or I could just grab this generic brown one. No, no, no. <laughs> I'm gonna have to go with dragon blood. Yeah. Oh, very well. And he, he like climbs half of the shelf and pulls out this red box, uh, this red crate. It's it's decrepit as as shit. Like it's starting to like the nails are coming out. It's rusty. It's been there for ages. It's probably like an old wine casket or something. Like, held, held bottles of wine in it. Um, he puts on. He puts all the all the stuff in. Slides it over to you. Says, "Okay, only only one other thing to do. That I have to stamp this." And he like goes to the desk, pulls out a drawer uh, with a small creaking sound, and from the drawer comes a mosquito. Dead mosquito. Also in the drawer. Um, comes a, um, a large stamp with a warehouse sigil on it, and he pours a little bit of wax on. Uh, some of it drips on his shoes. Ah, no. He doesn't have shoes. It's a halfway. Um, and he just he stamps the bill. He says, Here you go! Have fun crafting! Thank you, Ebo. No problem, Shelter. <laughs> yeah, very nice. And I grab the crate, put it on my shoulder, and I walk on back to my guild. Okay. So as you come into uh, the guild and you start unpacking your crate, you notice that there's something in addition to all the materials that you've recently uh, grabbed from the warehouse. There's a small note. I read the note. Um, it is in a language that you do not speak. Well, fuck. Do I at least recognize this language? Um, yes. Do make me... Um... Nah, you probably... You, you reckon it's some kind of elvish language. Ah. Uh, is my guild leader anywhere near me? No, but there are elven colleagues. Uh, okay, I just go to the first one that I... Show the note. That I, what's on the note? <sighs> if only you guys would just... You know, learn common languages. Yeah, well, if only you guys learned to hold a hammer properly. Now, please, read me the note. It says, forge me in the font of knowledge. For what? I don't know what. You asked me to read it. That's what it says. Okay. That's it? No name or sign? or huh? No. Well, thank you, uh, I guess. No problem. You, you do know what it is, right? What? The font of knowledge. <laughs> do I know what the font of knowledge is? Uh, make me a history check. Or make me a religion check. Um, you know that the font of knowledge is one of the large temples in Waterdeep, um, and it is the Temple of Agma. 
And it's actually not that far from the guild. But do they have forging supplies in there? No. How the hell? The fuck is this? Uh, uh yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, of course, I know what it is. It's the temple near here, so... Yeah. Okay. All good for you. Anyway, stuff to do, dilly-dally, and so forth. Uh, now, what I was planning to do was trade in the raw materials at the uh, other guys' guild. Just look at the name real quick. The most careful order of skilled smith and metal forges, because technically my guild doesn't produce weaponry. Technically. I mean, it's up to you. Well, yeah, it wouldn't be uh, uh, guild procedure to start crafting a dagger, so I'm just going to go over to them and, and trade my raw materials for a finely crafted dagger. Okay. Do you want them to make the inscription as well, or do you want to make the inscription No, yourself? that's my job. Okay. I'm also good, planning on uh, prettying up the dagger, since that's a thing we do at the Fine Smith Guild. Mm -hmm. uh, so it's just trading for a dagger that looks workable, uh, the most workable, since I'm going to alter it anyway, and then under the guise of fine smithing, make it better and prettier. Sure. So you, you managed to trade it in uh, at one of the guild points uh, for a pretty well-balanced dagger. It's actually quite uh, quite exquisite for the materials that you purchased. Ah, cool. Um, then I will uh, uh, take the dagger. And I was thinking I could... Uh, well, forging it in the... Oh, that's pretty tricky. Um. Hmm. 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 I think I will make the first additions and incisions and uh, first rough engraving at the forge. And then head over for the temple, because maybe with some go a copper wire and stuff, I can do the finish at the temple. Okay. Or well, at least check it out, but I'm pretty sure that won't work. Sure. But still. I, I think I'm going to um, almost finish it and then head over to the temple just to check it out. Sure. So you start working away at the blade, making like the first large grooves and incisions. Uh, where the where the name and the, like the title should be, um, and you start working on the hilt, like the the large bits, and uh, you wrap it up in a cloth and you make your way over to the font of knowledge, which is right here. Wait, I opened my... ah, there it is. Oh, that's even closer than the warehouse. Yeah. <laughs> Um, it is it is actually quite a uh, pretty temple. It's not too big, but it's quite a pretty temple. So I I go up to the temple and before I enter I go, Mora then protect me, and I step in. Okay. Um, as you step in, like the the temple is pretty empty. Um, there are not a lot of patrons right now, not a lot of clerks and priests. Um, however, on the far end of the temple, you see a, um, what's it called? Like a table? Altar? That's the one, altar. Um, you see an altar, and you're strangely drawn to it. I head over to it. Okay. Um, you get this strange sensation that this is where you need to finish the blade. It's all very weird. Hmm. 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 
I see, Moradin. So, your influence now even holds on this temple. And I hold my holy symbol in my... Uh, in a soft voice, I do a, a dwarven prayer. And I cast guidance on myself. And under okay. Moradin's guidance, I finish the weapon. Okay. So as you put your tools on the blade and you're ready to take like your first swing or your first tick, all of a sudden a radiant energy comes through your tools and it burns out the entire blade and it reforges and reforms it for quite a bit. The hilt changes a lot. Um, the blade actually becomes like bended and um, curvy. Uh, there's a, a female face on the end of the hilt. There are a couple of like wings and curves just forming out of nowhere. Uh, and the text, uh, Arriviate Chudum, just burns into the actual blade uh, and it glows red for quite a while. Make me a religion check. It's a 19. No, 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 19. You strongly feel as if Morden just combining knowledge with his fate. I don't know who ordered this weapon, but he sure is a lucky bastard. And I wrap it in cloth and head out. Okay. Where do you head out to? I head out to the warehouse to return the crate. <laughs> he was very thankful. Yeah. Uh, Where's Dragon Crate? Thank you, Hebo. It has served me well. No problem. And then I check out the note. Uh, there's probably probably something in the agreement of where they are picking it up, or I'm supposed to deliver, or whatever. There is uh, indeed a address there. And I will head over there and surprise him with my superior work and also fast pace of work. Okay. Um, okay. So as you start to head out, um, somebody comes in and that somebody will be taken back into time because this is where your session zero currently ends and we'll start the course. Oh, oh, that's it? For now. Ah, okay. But stay tuned. I need to entwine you peoples. Um, okay, so Nicole, um... You are taken back uh, a small week before your the end of your battle. Um, you are currently moving into Waterdeep. You're at the gates. You're ready to go in um, into Waterdeep. Um, and you are about to go and do what last sat in your backstory. Does that make sense? Okay. Yeah, I gotcha. Okay. So take it away from there. You're at the gates. All right, well, I take a couple steps in into the gate and, uh... <sighs> home. It's so nice to be home. Uh, so I take a, a look around for a bit, um, just to kind of absorb the, the feel of the city. And I would start making my way home to okay. my house. So as you make, like, the first step into Waterdeep, you suddenly feel like a small bump in your stomach. Um, and as you look down, you see a small gnome at your knee, or maybe your waist height, looking up. He has black robes on and a large tome under his arm. He says, have you been registered to Waterdeep? Uh, well, I'm actually from Waterdeep. Um, What's we're up your here. name, then? Uh, Kaliana. He says, like, rummaging through. Last name? Arave. Ah, was it the F? So it's going back. GDA. Um, A R I D A E. Your family has not lived there for a couple of years, has it? Uh, no, no. My family has lived here for uh, about fifty years. Not according to my book, and my book's never wrong. Uh, are you sure you're looking at the right book? Are uh, you insulting your Majesty, ma'am? 
No, no, I just wanted to make sure. I I mean, I've I've been away for a bit, but my my family has lived over in the castle ward by the market for a, a, my entire life. Okay. Name one street. Lamp Street. He's, he's like taking it taking it back a bit. I mean, like, Lamp Street, Jen. I, he doesn't know all the names of his name. It's right um, by the market. He made me a persuasion check. He starts thinking and to himself, and he goes, Yes, yes, I think. I think I was thrown out of a tavern near there once. Good tavern. Good tavern. The great drunkard, they call it, I think. Yes. Okay. You have one day, one day to go home and register under your family name. But if they are not here, as my book says, you register to Waterdeep. We will find you. No, not a problem. Not a problem at all. I love to keep things above board. I will be back, or I will register at home. Very well. Thank you. Keep an eye on you. Bye. Bye. All right. So I very confusedly uh, continue to walk on my way home. Okay. Um. So as you make your way on the high road, you see uh, all kinds of um, of events happening. You see the carriages. You see people, street vendors. Uh, there are a lot of people, people, women in gorgeous gowns, uh, a lot of traders going up and down, uh, even some technologies that you haven't seen yet, more modern ways of transporting goods and people. Um, it has quite a new age feel to uh, what you were used to back in your time that you left Waterdeep to go somewhere else. Um, when you go around halfway the high road up next to the castle ward, um, you see a small patrol of guards arresting a group of black hooded people. All right. Is there any, any kind of like commotion or anything or are they fairly just accepting they are they are fairly accepting it. There are a lot of bystanders, a lot of people watching. All right, then I kind of stroll over and and slowly walk past, trying to keep an ear out for you know a little bit of rubbernecking, see what's going on. Okay, make me a perception check. So you hear um, a lot of ruckus, like the entire group's like buzzing, saying, oh, did you hear? Yes, did you hear? Did you see them? And one of the, a couple of fragments that you stand out, or that you can make out, are two women talking. Um, one of them says, isn't that, isn't that Marie's boy? Wasn't he with the Zentrim group? I heard they were picking fights with Xenathars. Um, all right, I'll walk, walk up to the, the two ladies and kind of just be like, Z Xanathar's group. They, they immediately, like, they, they turn just peel white and they move. We didn't say anything. And they just scuttle off uh, into the distance and move, move out of the group. One of um, the guards notices you as well. He, like, he flips around his helmet. And so he directly looks at you. Hello, how are you doing? Good day. Good day. Uh, love, love the work you guys do. Um, I'm from from here actually. Um, everything's okay. I take it you guys got a handle on this. Best be moving out now, miss. Nothing to see here. Okay. Do I recognize any anybody in the black robes? Um, nobody stands out familiar. The only thing that stands out is that they are nearly the same kind of wardrobe. Do I recognize the outfits as anything? Um, maybe history check. Okay. 
Um, you would remember that it was, um, like from from old moments, stories, legends, and like a lot of street names it used to be like a scolding word to call somebody a zenti, uh, because if they're in full black, um, it was it was pretty much the signature dress code for anybody who did anything mischievous or thiever, thievish or whatever. Uh, the, th the actual thieves guilds are banned by law in Waterdeep, but uh, everybody knows that there's like an underground, uh, under the system network, uh, run by what a lot of people think are the Zentrin, and one of their key components is that they all wear black. All right. Um... I'll uh, smile at the guard who was talking to me. I give him a little wave and uh, all right, have have a good day. And um, do I see anybody else leaving the the group of citizens that I could maybe you know walk up to and talk to? Well, the moment that uh, the guard says there's nothing to see here, move on. Uh, a lot of people immediately react to that statement. So the entire group starts to disperse. Like you don't want to argue with any guard. Anymore. Like, for the, the smallest thing, they can arrest you and throw you in jail. And, like, even a five gold fine is pretty, pretty steep for most water deep. Um, so the entire group starts to disperse. Uh, all, some of them go and did just read some. Go into that tree. <clears throat> a lot of them stay pocketed and whispering. And uh, But as soon as, like, most of the group is spread out, the guards just pull up the guys and move them off into, uh, into a guard post direction. All right, I try to walk away, and uh, if I see anyone friendly, friendly looking, also walking away, just kind of walk up next to them like I'm, I'm their friend, and and say, hey, what's going on? Uh, everything okay? Um, you you see this bald looking, well, you reckon to be a butcher? Like he still has the apron on with the blood, and there's one of the butcher shops uh, on the castle ward. He's almost heading back in. Uh, you run up to him, you tap him on the shoulder, says, yeah. yeah, yeah. What, like, what happened? Uh, he trusts you. Oh, it's the same boys again making rockers all around the city. Really? I've been, I've been gone for a while. I, I don't remember uh, too much ruckus going on. Has, has, has everything been okay? No, oh, the streets have been escalating lately. Really? Yeah. Uh, are the city, are the, the uh, city uh, guard watch people not... Um, keeping on top of things as they usually do. They do, they do. They have a pretty steep finger on it, but you know, boys will be boys, eh? Like I guess, I guess. Elbows you. Uh, <laughs> yeah, all right. Uh, boys, boys, boys. All right. Um, well, thank you so much. Uh, you, ha you have a good day. Appreciate it. No problem. Uh, you want to buy some meat? Uh, you know, I'm good right now. I'm I'm on my way home. I uh, want to see my parents and uh, pretty sure they'll be able to put on a dinner for me. Thanks, hey. though. What's a better way to come back to your family with a nice brisket? Or rib? Or... It's be I been know. a while. Been a while since I've been home. Not quite sure the state of the larder right now. Wouldn't want to come home with, you know, have, to, have, a, have a side of beef and then have nowhere to keep it. Okay. Well, do remember Bobby's butchery. Bobby's, Bobby's Butchery, I will remember that. Uh, have you been in, in uh, operation for a while? I've been in all my life. I'm the third generation of a third son of a third wife. Right, right. I thought I thought maybe uh, maybe I've I've seen your your shop before. Uh, all right. Well, it's been lovely chatting with you uh, of Bobby's Bobby of Bobby's Butchery. Right. Okay. Well. Bye. Uh, bye. Uh, and I will continue. The door just swings open. He, he moves into the butchery. And I will continue on my way home. Okay. Um, so as you reach your uh, maternal home, um, the street hasn't changed that much. Like you still have these childhood memories of things that you know there. Uh, you haven't left like a couple of years ago. Uh, not much has changed. Like the lampposts are in the same place. The same flowers are still hanging on the neighbor's door. Uh, all the the letter boxes are still the same color. Like nothing has really changed. One thing that did change, however, is a small plaque on the front door of your house. 
Uh, and how did it change? Uh, it currently bears the name Huxley. Huxley? Yes. All right, well, I will, uh, having walked up to uh, my house and seen this plaque, I will uh, take a step back, take a very confused look around, make sure I'm at the right house. Okay. Um, you do believe that you were at the right house. All right, then. I will uh, walk up to the door and uh, knock. Okay. Um, it, it takes a little while, and on the inside you hear all kinds of rumbling until uh, the door swings open, and nearly in the same eye height as you is a small eight-year-old human boy. Hello! Okay. Hello. You. Who, who are you? Are you mute? I'm just in shock. I don't believe I know you. Uh, who who are you? I don't know you. I, I'm Walton. Walton Huxley. Walton. Walton Huxley. <gasps> um, do you know <gasps> you? I'm I'm Kelly. Uh, Kelly Arve. Our uh, third tell and Dana here. Who? <gasps> Martel and Dina, the, the the people that own this house. No, my mums and dads own the house. Who's your mum and dad? Well, mum and dad. Oh, oh, okay. Uh, but uh, would you mind getting your mum or your dad for me? I would love to speak to them. They're not home. Okay. Uh, who else? Baba. Is... But Baba's asleep above. B Baba's asleep above. Yeah. How, Not a good uh, nanny, is it? Oh, uh, how... Uh, how old I are you? Done, I might have done something to her drink, though. Shh. What, what, ooh, what'd you do to her drink? Nothing. Just poured a little more than usual. <laughs> oh, so... So she'll probably, probably be out for a bit then. Yes. Uh, when do you expect your mom and dad home? Late in tonight. Like tonight, and yes. have you lived? Have you lived here for a, a while? Yeah, I think mommy and daddy boy. Oh yeah, we've been here for a while. What's a while? A, a while. You've you've lived here. Um, do you remember so... living anywhere else? Yeah. Okay. Um. I do. See, I'm pretty sure this this is my house. So it's mine. It's it... my mum's and dad's. See here on the plaque, it says Huxley. That's yeah, I do see that. That's very, very confusing. Because when I left, it said Arve. Uh, Are they gone? Oh, I, I, ha, 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 ha. Uh, I would laugh more at your horrible joke if I wasn't so confused right now. Um, you need a drink? I've would, got some uh, of Would Would you mind? Would you mind if I just came in and, and took a quick look around? Well, mommy always said I don't have to go with strangers. Nothing about inviting him into our. That's true. I'm not. I'm not asking you to leave your own home. Yeah, you can come in. That's fantastic. Awesome. Just don't wake Baba because I'll have to do homework and I don't. Do okay, I will try really, really hard. I don't want to wake Baba. Okay, I come in. Okay, so I quietly, very quietly, <laughs> tiptoe into the house, looking around for anything. Does does it look the interior look familiar to me? Our furnishings, anything? Um, besides the the actual like interior, like the place of the stairs, the place of the windows, it that's all the same as you remember it, but it's completely redecorated. All right, now now I'm confused. Uh, would. Would you mind if I had a, a quick look in, in some of the sleeping chambers? Oh, no. There's one room I can't go into, though. You want to go there with me? There's one room you can go into or one oh, room can't. you can't? Daddy won't allow me. What, why aren't you allowed to go in there? I don't know, but he isn't, but it's locked. Okay, and uh, does that room look like a room that I might... Uh, be very interested in, as in my old uh, wardrobe? Uh, it's not your old wardrobe, but it used to be a uh, room where 
one of the servants probably would have lived. It's lockable. That's it's one of the few rooms in the entire house. Hmm. Hmm. What would uh? I don't. Uh, I don't know that I should. I should be going into the rooms with you. Do you? Do you have a key? No. No. Uh, I don't know that I should be breaking into rooms in your house then. I, 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 I promise I, would like... I won't tell. Yeah, I, I believe you. I just, uh, I don't oh, know why you're not please. allowed in there. Because it's Baba's office. I can go into Daddy's office. But I, I want you. I kind of want to check, like, I, I, I used to have this, like, cool little hiding place, and I, I kind of want to see if anything's still in there. Where is it? Uh, it's in my old my old closet, my old what's wardrobe. Your, what's your closet? Uh, it's one of the one of the rooms. <laughs> Which one though? We've got so many. I know there are so many rooms in this big house. Uh, it's the one I used to keep my clothes in. How would I know which room that is? Uh, that's an excellent point. Uh. <laughs> Is it is it the is is it the one that's locked? Is it his dad's office? No, no, no. Okay, it's one of the bedrooms, uh, one of the sleeping chambers. And it's just is it in your closet or is it the secret hideout behind the closet? Oh, you 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 know about the secret hideout? Oh yeah, that's where I keep all my stuffed animals. There's one in my room. Oh, oh, was was there anything in there when you moved in? Um, yeah, but he didn't live very long. He? Yeah, well, I, call, I call him Mr. Cobby. Uh, who was Mr. Cobby? My pet spider. Oh, all right. No, I don't think I don't think I knew him. Uh, I'm sorry. I'm sorry that he's not with us anymore, though. Nah, I buried him in the backyard. It's fine. Oh, that was very that was very sweet of you. We sang songs. Oh, that's that was very that was very nice. Uh, would you tell you what? Would you like to give me give me a tour of your house? Won't you show me around a bit? Not until you let me into Daddy's office. I really don't think I should. Of course <laughs> you should. That's the reason I I ask you in my house. I thought you just wanted to give me a drink, and be nice. Well, the best drinks are in Daddy's office. Uh, and your daddy's not home. No. All right, I am kind of curious. <laughs> all right, all right, I'll tell you what. Uh, you let me go look for something first. Uh -huh. Help me, help me find something first, and then I'll, I'll help you uh, take a peek into your dad's office. What if you unlock the door for me? I'll go in there, and you can go look at the rest of the house. But do not wake Baba. I mean, I will have to do so much homework. Okay, where, where's Baba? Where's he sleeping? He's on the. If you go up the stairs, third door on your left. Shh. Do I know that room as what? What, what was that room? That it was to your me? former former parents' bedroom. Oh, okay, all right. Um, Baba's in there. Okay, that's confusing. Um, how about uh, you give me a tour of the house first? No. And then we'll end at your dad's office. No, I don't wanna. Uh, are you sure? Yeah. Or you could just, if you, I mean, if you don't, if you, if you can't help me, I could just start crying loud. Oh no, there's no need to do that. Yeah, we can, we can go check out your father's office. That's fine. That's, That's what I absolutely thought. Absolutely fine. <laughs> yeah, you little shit. <laughs> uh, <laughs> I say that very, very quietly under my breath. <laughs> <laughs> as he's, all right, show me the way. As he's 
walking ahead to to his dad's office. Okay, so you you like you go to the hallway, <laughs> um, and there's a one there's one, um, and it's it's locked. It doesn't have a padlock; it just has a key. Shocking. All right, um, turn around for a second. I don't want you to see me doing this. Hi, is what mommy and daddy used to say. Okay. He just he turns around and he. <laughs> <laughs> he um he stands in that corner. All right, yeah, you do, you do that. That's good. That's good. And I will uh check the door for any traps. Okay, maybe an investigation check. And how do you do that? Mute it. Thank you. Just a physical check of like, do I see anything that's going to be set off if the door opens? Okay. Uh, so far, uh, you do not think that this has any sign of any kind of trap. Okay, did I need to roll something? No. <laughs> okay. Um, then I will uh, attempt to open the lock with my thieves' tools. Okay. Do it. Which I don't have. Office? Because I'm not allowed to go in there. All right, you promise me you won't, like, touch anything, break anything? Um, Just say yes so sure. I feel better. Okay, thank you. All right, go back to your corner. Okay. And I attempt to open the door. Okay, so um, as you start filling around with the lock, you realize it's a pretty easy lock. Like, it's an indoor lock. It doesn't have to – it's not a vault or anything. Um, so you manage to click it open quite easily. Uh, it swings open, and it opens up into this dusty office. Like, there's a large uh, bureau with all kinds of papers and, and piles and books and scrolls just piled everywhere. It's just completely chaos. And, like, the moment that the door swings open, you feel like this small shape shooting all across your leg into the room. And he's like, okay, you go into the house now. Bye! I just want to reach out and grab the back of his of his shirt real quick and be like, do not break anything. I will. Not. I will not. Uh, Audrey, I uh, don't really care what he's doing. Um, so I'm going to take a look around the office and see if there's anything that I recognize as either mine or my parents. Make me a perception check. Um, as you glance around, there are a lot of things. The room is just crammed with stuff. Like there's this this smell coming at you, it's quite musky smell uh, from all the documents that are there. You see a, a layers of dust laying on some like some things have haven't been touched for months, maybe even years. Um, there's not a lot of light. The windows are covered with um, a black curtain that that is draped like semi across the window it's it's a little bit smudgy as well so there's not a lot of light so for you to just gaze around the room it's it's pretty difficult you don't see anything that stands out immediately or that reminds you of triggers something in your memory that reminds you of something that your family uh used to own or have uh for you it's just pretty much a room filled with paper yeah, but everything definitely looks like it's been there for a while. Um, yes. Okay, hey, hey, Walton. Hey, Walton, What? when do your parents normally get home? Like, what time? Um, I don't know. Baba usually puts me to sleep. Oh, okay. What time does Baba usually uh, wake up to put you to sleep? Um, let's see. I've given him five, no, six cups uh... oh he's good for a couple of hours six cups of of the usual you said yeah yeah and the doctor said baba could only have one a week <laughs> oh that's that's not too great is it um no no making homework that's not great no that's not great either is it um no. okay Aren't you uh, going i would like to... to go look at the house though uh, yeah, I was gonna bring you with me though. So oh, how about we? Uh... 
I'll start crying. Mm, you little brat. Uh, <laughs> uh, okay, I'll tell you what. Um, let's 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 hang out here for a little bit, and then we'll 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 leave. Okay. Okay, so while he's looking around, I just want to rifle through some of the papers on the desk. Do I see anything about like the sale of the house uh, or anything with my parents' names on he's, it? He's doing the exact same thing. Like he's pulling out papers and just flying them into it. There are piles of paper just flying everywhere. The entire room just feels like all the papers and documents flying around. Um, make me an investigation check as you rummage through everything that's there. A 14. Um, 14, sorry. <laughs> with, a, with a 14, you um, you start, like, going through books. You got, start, like, opening scrolls, trying to find things. And you notice that there is a lot of rage on something uh, called the Stone of Glory. You don't really know what it is. You don't have any resemblance. It, it doesn't ring a bell. It just... The name comes back on a lot of papers. Um, most of them are scribblings. A lot of them are drawings. Of um, um, a little bit of an oval stone, um, and it's it's just the only name that keeps coming back on all the documents is the stone of gold. Okay, so it's just uh, like random scribbles and and diagrams and stuff. Yeah. Do I do I recognize the name, the stone of glory? Uh, maybe a search check. Nine. You do not uh, remember any, about any such item. All right. Um, I want to grab one of the one of the pieces of paper with like a drawing and some scribbles. Sure. Just like something I want to look into in the future. Fine. Um, the moment that you start shoving things like down your not your bag or uh, into your pockets. Um, uh, Walter Huxley stands right behind you. Going, Did you say your name was Arave? Yeah. Yes, I did. Isn't this your name then? And he holds out a purchase order for a blade. Oh, th uh, thank you. I will take that because it's got my name on it. And so obviously it's mine. Makes uh, sense. Did you did you see anything else uh, with my name on it? No. All right. Well, I'm done here. Uh, looks like you've had a lot of fun um, looking at all the uh, papers everywhere. So how about we back out now? That's fun. I just began. And he turns around. And he runs into the desk. He jumps in and he just vanishes in enormous pile of papers that, is, that he's amassed there. He's just like thrown everything on top of you. He's like, like diving into a ball pit. But he died. He dove into a paper, pretty much. Hey, Walton. Looks like you're having a lot of fun there. Um, how about we make a deal? You come out, and I won't lock you in the room and leave you to have to explain to your dad why you're in there. It it just stays quiet for a couple of seconds. Oh. And he like he comes crawling out of the paper. You're no fun. And he's oh, come on. Off like, mm. I'm fun. I let you in for a bit. I bet your dad never let you in for a bit. Um, all right. Uh, anything else cool in this house that you want to show me? No, I've seen everything else. Okay, I want to go uh, walk upstairs and just put put my ear to Baba's door and see if I can hear him breathing. <laughs> you hear very loud snoring. Okay, good. Baba's alive. All right. I just wanted to make sure, you know, you said you gave him six or something. Doctor said he was only supposed to have one. I know homework sucks, but I'm sure deep down you love Baba, right? right. I do. Right. Okay. I just wanted to make sure he was okay. Now, I'm just going to go take a quick look in uh, one of these other bedrooms and uh, uh, we'll be cool, right? Cool. Sure. Uh, so I want to go look in uh, what was... Uh, sure. Sure. He just he runs over to his rooms and the door he flings the door open. It's just a, a generic 
children's bedroom. Like it has a bed, it has a toy chest, it has a, I don't know light bulbs, thingy, mobiles, everything you can possibly imagine in a child's bedroom. All right. Oh, this is a really cool room. Boy, so you got this room, you've got Baba's room. You want to show me one of the other rooms too? It's, what What do you, why? Oh, it's just like, it's a little secret uh, thing. The rooms aren't secret. They're just, they're right there. Well, how do you know? There might be a secret floorboard somewhere. No, I've pretty much checked everything. Okay, are there definitely no other secret rooms or anything? No, probably not. <laughs> uh, all right. Well, uh, hey, Walton, this has been a lot of fun. Um, and uh, I, I, yeah, I bet you had a lot of fun. Um, mm -hmm. So I'm, I'm, I'm going to go. And uh, yeah, yeah, it was real nice meeting you. Uh, yeah. Good luck with the whole no no homework thing. Yeah, good luck with the no home thing. Yeah, thanks. Thanks for that, you little shit. Uh, so <laughs> uh, I just want to duck into what was my old wardrobe and just see if there's any loose floorboards or anything. Uh, make me an investigation check. Fifteen. I'm looking to see if they're if like my parents may have left me anything, mm -hmm. any clues. Uh, or anything. The only thing that you find in any either scribbles with all kinds of drawings that uh, Walton made or stuffed animals. All right, I'll leave Walton his stuff then, um, and I will very confusedly and worriedly leave what used to be my home, uh, and. Sure. Once I'm a little distance away, like next street over or whatever, I want to take a good look at the uh, paper he found with my name on it. Okay. So it is um, uh, actually a note that says that um, the purchase order was sent to um, a fine smith's guild because it had engravings on it. And you are able to find it at number 80 Traders Lane. Is there any um, date of, of on the purchase order? Like how long ago? Way, sorry. Um, it was purchased roughly two weeks ago. Curiouser and curiouser. I know. All right. Uh, well, I'm going to go ahead, and that being my only clue so far, <laughs> uh, with one last forlorn glance at my house down the, the block, I'm going to go make my way to number 80 Traders Lane with my little purchase order. Okay. Cool. I'll need a small sec. As you are walking through the city towards the Traders Way, uh, you enter into the Guild Hall of fine smiths and armors and you can describe yourself as you are walking into uh, somebody that has a small parcel under their hand and nearly bumps into mid doorway which is Hjalder. So what does Hjalder see when the door opens? Uh, Hilder, you see what appears to be a young female dwarf uh, with a thick, uh, dark red braid pulled to her front. Um, she's wearing long sleeves, uh, gathered at the wrist. She's got gloves on. She's got a big scarf uh, around her neck. Um, she's got you know tight trousers and comfy, comfy looking boots on. Um, no visible weapons. She looks very confused and extremely concerned. Okay. And what does Callie see? Uh, Callie sees a, a, a rough dwarf. Um, he's bare chested, tanned, covered in suit with black long hair and a long beard. Uh, he has a headband on his uh, forehead uh, where he wipes his sweat. He has a tool belt with all sorts of hammers and tinkering tools um and um 
Well, there you go. Uh, he's pretty young for a dwarf, I think. Only 67. So that's pretty young for a dwarf. Uh, barely considered an adult. Uh, but the look in his eyes is wise and, and uh, more of age. Okay. Kelly, you enter into the room. Oh, um, hello, hello there. Hi, how you, how you doing? Hi, right, I'm fine. What can I do for you? Awesome. So I, uh, I've, I've got, um, I've got this purchase order that, uh, says it was, um, uh, here. Well, you know, I've got like my receipt, obviously, uh, the order should have been coming to you guys. And I'm just here to see, you know, check on the status of it and see what's going on. All right, let me see. I give him the purchase order receipt. Okay. Well. What do you do with it? Oh, I look at it. <laughs> um, it it bears the exact same reference number as the one currently holding in your hand. But I got that order this morning, right? Yep. Look, ma'am. I guess you're a patient and all, but I just got this this morning. I'm an amazing blacksmith, uh, so I have finished your order, but still, you're a, you're being a bit impatient here. Okay, first of all, it's Miss, uh, and if you'll look on my my copy, um, sent sent it in about two weeks ago. It's not. I'm not sure why you've just received it this morning. I compare the dates on both the order and the receipt. Uh, for you, they're both from this morning. For her, they are both from two weeks ago. Ma'am, look at this here. This is today's date. Uh, unless today is uh, two weeks ago, uh, have I entered into an alternate dimension? What is today's date for you? Boulder, what's the today's date? Um... Something to do with a sun. Yeah, do that's I... a, that's usually a number, Boulder. A number. Um, the sixth. Yeah, uh, ma'am. Uh, there you go. The seventh. And is today? Do I think today is the the seventh or the sixth oh, no. or whatever? No, it's it's by it's like the twenty seventh of something. Okay, no, today is the the twenty seventh. Did she hit her head or something? Do you check? Uh, well, I kind of look at her suspiciously. Uh, to, to, uh, is he? Is he? Is he uh, making a fool out of me? Is he joking? She. Thank you. That's a she. I am certain, certain sure that today is the twenty somethings, and. Uh, I feel like since you're the one that works with a lot of tools and hammers, if any one of us was to have hit their head, uh, I feel like it would have been you. That being said, I'm having kind of a weird day. So, yeah. Uh, either way, you said you, you finished my order, right? So I could, I could, I could have it. Well, yeah, ma'am, perhaps uh, if you take a seat, I give you a, like a glass of water and... You seem a bit out of it. Yeah, no, you know what? I will. I will take uh, a, a, a cup of water. That would be great. And if you have somewhere, I could I could sit down for a minute as well. That is fantastic. I uh, uh, head over to my working bench and clumsily, like, throw some scraps and stuff from a stool and just put it in the middle of that. There you go, miss. You That's put the blade down? Uh, no, I hold it under my arm. Okay. This is my uh, holy master masterpiece. That's it. <laughs> I'm holding yeah, on to this <laughs> until I figure out what the fuck's going on. Can I take a look at the the purchase order? He's got a copy of. Does is anything else like is anything different from the copy I have? No, it's it's like there was one like one page uh, with all the purchase uh, uh, information on it and like the receipt that's just ripped off and you've got the second part and he's got the, f it, like they fit perfectly. Right. Does it say anything on there about like 
it, it is like, who made the order is uh, on there. No, only the address where it should be delivered. Yeah, so and there's not like a name on it, right? No. And the address where it was to be delivered, was that my address? Yes. Uh, okay. I have a, a wee question. The face on the dagger, yeah. is it her face? Uh, no. Can I see the dagger? Is so. it wrapped up? I, I forget. Yeah, it's wrapped up. It's wrapped up. I, uh, uh, I bring her a glass of water, and on my way to get the glass of water, I want to check if my guild master is in. Uh... He is currently not in. It's He's a she. A trade did you just assume her gender? I did. She is on a trade mission outside of what it the bitch. Uh, so <clears throat> situation's kind of fishy. Yeah, I'm. I'm gonna sit there, just sip in the water, kind of. Uh, yeah splash a little on the back of my neck kind of can i, I, I can i find the person that uh brought me the order this morning uh it's you know him um it's one of the the dwarven like the word dispensers like um all the orders come into a central bin and from that bin they just give out to different classes or different skill levels they just hand out the orders they're just there okay, are two so or three guys to do that. I, uh, I, I go and get him. And I go, okay, so here's the thing. Uh, a girl just showed up, or a woman, with oh, yeah. the receipt, the receipt for, uh, for the weapon you uh, brought me the order of this morning. Hey. But it seems a bit iffy to me. Can you, can you tell if it's the same person that ordered it? She's not the one that ordered it, but I don't know anybody. It just comes in the bin. I give her the bin. Well, let me see, though. Well, it's, yeah. been, it's already been paid for. Is that the blade? Uh, yeah, I got it right here. If she's got the receipt, just give it. Well, yeah, okay. It's hard as she paid for it, right? Well, well, I'm not sure on that bit. Hey, the one who's got the receipt is the rightful owner of the purchase order. It's already been paid for in full. <sighs> All right. At this point, but I will have uh, gone gone to look for him. You would have gone to look for Hjolder. Yes, for Hjolder. Like, yeah. well, if did I, I saw him walk away, right? Like, I just want to kind of. Yeah, walk. it's not. It's not a very big guild. Like the right, building right. is not humongous. You, you. He's yeah, like I'm not right like searching now. through a maze. No. Yeah, that's. I just want to walk where I saw him go, just to be like, alright, um. Kind of want to, uh, you know, get get going uh, with this. I've got lots of things to figure out today. Yeah, well, so have I. So, listen. Where did you get the receipt? From my house? It, it, does, it does match your... <laughs> it, it does match your, your paperwork, right? Like, can we... Do like one of those like puzzle piece things where you put the pieces yeah, of paper together yeah, and see that the thingies does, match but, up. That's, that's um, mine. Okay, that's my receipt. Uh, I yeah, mean, so I've... listen. Do you know where you are? I'm in Waterdeep. Yeah, very good. Right? You do you know what okay. building you're in? I'm in the uh, Fine Smiths Guild. Oh, yeah, that's um, a decent guess, but it also has a name. On this, the 27th day of no, the month. No, you see, there's the problem. You're like two weeks ahead of us now, and that's that's just, I mean... Oh, uh, two weeks okay. behind. You, guys, you are two How weeks ahead of her. Wait, what? <laughs> Is she in front of me or behind me? Behind you. Now you oh. are... Uh, wait, what did I say? No, he's, he'd be two weeks behind me. Yeah. Yeah. All right, yeah. No, you're two weeks behind. I think you've lost a couple weeks somewhere, mate. No, ma'am. Ma ma I grab, I grab one of the miss. other Sorry, random. Miss. Yeah, miss. Thank you. Uh, I grab one of the uh, other people just standing around, kind of like grabbing by the sleeve. And just, hey, real quick, what's today's date? Uh twenty seventh. <laughs> Wait, what? So I'm behind. 
<laughs> I, I'm just saying, you know what? Hey, I, you're I would love... You're living two weeks in the future in your head. Okay, I'm fucking confused right now. <laughs> okay, so at this point, at this point, I'd like you to have a seat. Can I get you a glass of water? Here, you know what? I'm yeah, yeah, mine. yeah, that seems like a good, a good plan. What the I'll tell fuck? you, I'll change you. You take, you take the cup of water, and I'll take that package. Thank you. <laughs> no, well, well, here's the thing, though. Have you ever heard of the great Lord Moradin? Oh, I yeah, uh, the great uh, dwarf, dwarf god, yeah. Right. Yeah. Okay. So there's the problem. You've got me questioning everything. I everything I thought I knew. I mean, I'm so I'm. I know I'm pretty young. I think you've got a few years on me, even. But I, I, I thought I knew more of the world than this. Less, the god, of all dwarfs, the all father, the master of the real forge, the soul forger himself, Moradin, blessed this weapon yeah. that you supposedly ordered. So I need to be damn sure I'm giving it to the right person here. I feel like everything, everything is lining up to show that you should be giving me uh, the thing that was blessed by Morden. Man, and what's your, I mean, that seems what's legit. your I'm a, name? I'm a dwarf. You can see I'm a dwarf. Don't I look like a dwarf? Yeah, you sure look like a dwarf. So well, what's your why, full name? Why wouldn't Moradin want to give me a present then? Because Moradin hasn't been on this realm for years. And he doesn't, doesn't just bless every dwarf that walks into Waterdeep. Okay, look, I'm really sorry that Martin hasn't blessed anything of yours. Okay, that's no need to take it out on me. All right, my name's Kaliana Arave, uh, as as is written on this purchase order, Arave, A-R-I-V-A-E, no, that's no, me. No, there's no name on the purchase order. There's only an address. Well, the name is actually uh, part half of the engraving. on. Oh, that's, that's the thing I engraved? Uh, wasn't yeah. that written on the purchase order? Like, it would have been there that it Arave needed to say it, to yeah. Me. Mm. No, on the purchase order, that, that was just an address. No, he definitely said Arve Tudum because I remember yeah, hearing on, it. Oh, weapon. that's my name. Yeah, it's on the design, like it's on the purchase order, like in this. It would have to be on the blade. Uh, ins inscribe Arve Tudum. Do I know what the Tudum part is? Is that like my family motto or something? No. So as you can see there, it very clearly says Arave Tudum, and I don't know if I made it clear, but Tudum is my nickname. That you can make a persuasion check on, and he'll also I didn't it. show her the weapon yet, so <clears throat> no, but it's on the purchase order, and I saw the purchase order. Ah, okay, there you go. I'm this sorry, Walter. Well, what did you say for persuasion? Yeah. Oh, come on, that's mine. The two, do I not look like a Tudum? You you definitely know that this is not her nickname. You believe the first part, that this is her last name, but you, you definitely know that Tudum is not her nickname. Would I have anything on me that would show my name? Like, I don't remember seeing anything about, like, official water deep identification or anything. No, I didn't think so. Uh... Look, well, would you do me the courtesy, just for my own sake, because this, this is truly the finest weapon I've ever made, to head over to a magister with me and check the address with your name, and if it's all right, it's all right, and you can take the blade. Tiny issue. Um, <laughs> just, uh, look, I'm having a really, really bad day. <laughs> I tighten the grip I around just, the blade. I really... <laughs> really really need what's in that package okay you don't understand this is my only link to my parents okay i i do i not look like a trustworthy person no oh <laughs> that's sad <laughs> um okay so say that i can't prove uh my address right now uh, long, long, confusing story. I'm not quite sure about it myself at this point. Um, but you do believe me that my, my name's Arave, right? Right. Okay, the two of them thing well, was a joke. Yeah. 
kind of. Okay, Wouter, this is very important. Yes. <laughs> Who's on the correct date? Because you're confusing the hell out of me. <laughs> we don't know. <laughs> or do we purposely don't know? No, no, no. You, you both believe you are on the correct date. She just has more proof that her date is the right one. No, because I asked a dude and he said, no, you're right. And she asked a random dude and they went, you're right. So we both have the equal amount of proof. I, I can honestly say it doesn't really matter. Okay. It totally does. <laughs> you know what? Dude, dude, I've got a lot more on my plate right now than worrying about what friggin' day of the month you it is. You don't know okay? where I'm from, where I've been, what I had to do to come here. Okay, sorry. Exactly, all right? You don't know what I've been through today, okay? My day has started up here, and it's just gone, boom, really down to a pit of despair for the day, okay? Look, I really just Matt. want my stuff. It's yeah, but I have to make day. sure it's your stuff. That. Why would I come in here looking for something that wasn't mine? With the Look, receipt. Even if you want to dodge the magisters, which seems really fishy to me, we could be at a you the door. And that, that, is, that is proof enough. It's not that I want to avoid the Magisters, all right? I love the Magisters. I love following the law. I am above board in every way possible. It's just for well, very confusing great. issues. Just, I can't prove. Then you should I, be, I can't prove it right now. Well, but you should be registered to the city then, and you're in the, in the book. Again, again, long, long, complicated story. My, look, okay, look, look, my family's missing, my house was stolen, I don't know what's going on, I just want my friggin' thing. But is it your thing, though? It is, it's got my name on it! But you said you got the receipt from your house, but you don't have your house. It, it was my house. I never said when, it was my house. I look, look out to see if I'll there's you, a I'll magister tell you what. near us. I'll tell you what. The blade was blessed by Marden, right? Right? Am I silent? Right. Right, okay. Uh, so then if I try to take it and it's not for me, don't you think Marden would, like, strike me down or something? Probably I'm willing to not. risk it. Probably I'm willing not. to risk it. No, but probably not. I, he probably would. I mean, he took the time not to bless... call more than the Almighty Smiter. He might be. No, I'm sure he's not. That could be like a, a nickname. No, I'm pretty sure it's not. <sighs> Ma'am, I would appreciate it if you just Sir... went to the magister with me and it'll all be sorted out. Sir, look, I don't think a magister is gonna help me right now <laughs> nope but he sure as hell is gonna help me i'm feeling the um the same bloke that uh hands out the orders um um uh, walks by i mean you still have not serviced this customer yet well See? there's a problem there's she's no problem. no problem she doesn't own she the receipt because she doesn't own the house but she owns the receipt. No, she had the receipt. That doesn't mean she owns it. It's proof enough for us. Possession Since, is oh, like no. all of the law. This is... What? <laughs> I said possession is all of the law, Audrey. I own the receipt. Up. It's my receipt. I'm not just giving up the finest craft I ever made to a thief if she stole the receipt. If a you magister know, can confirm her identity, it's done. And what how the it? hell would a magister be able to confirm my identity? I've never met a magister. I don't know. It's the, the magister. City. That's what they do. You know what the magister is going to say? Does she have the receipt? Yes, give her the fucking thing. If that's what the magister says, that's what the magister says, and that's how we'll do it. I, I turned to the guy who came over and was talking about why hasn't he given it to me yet, and I'm like, sir, could you please just, I have the receipt, I just want I'm a respectable stuff. guiltsman, I have my rights as well, the law's the law, the magister can help us. Well, if you're that good at what you do, why don't you just make another one? For you, and then give me mine. That's not the point here, Les. I think it is the point.
But it really isn't. Okay, I reach out and just try to grab the package from them. <laughs> okay. Um, the moment that your hand starts reaching for the blade, the package starts to vibrate. Aha! Uh -huh. See? There you go, that you're the great that... smiter. You've been smited. There you go. It's not yours. Uh, still standing here. Last I checked. Yeah, that's because I saved smited. you by keeping it away. Haven't been smited. For all you know, uh, Mardin is a good, good friend of mine. All right? Would you give me the damn vibrating package? <laughs> At this point, do you really want to be holding on to it? <laughs> I really do. Even more so. Well, you're a, a very weird individual. Um, can I please, please? I just want one thing to go right today. Yeah, sure. Just go over to the Magister with me and it'll all be sorted out. Uh, I, I try again to grab the package. Okay, I'm now holding like, knock it, it like, no, I try to, like I try to, like, knock it out of it. oh. Well, then, yeah, I try to, like, reach it and, like, grab it away. Okay. In your, uh, hustle and bustle fight, which turned out to be slightly romantic for some reason, uh, a small spark flies over between you kibbling lovers. No, I'm kidding. Um, so as you guys both reach for the blade, one is holding it. The actual parcel starts to come loose, and the blade comes hovering out. And it's now dangling mid-air. All right, I try to grab it. Like, <laughs> just swipe it out of the air. Same. Uh, you can both By the handle. Me, you can both make me a... By the fucking whatever. Dexterity also guidance. Dexterity check. Dexterity versus the rogue. Yeah, this is going to work. Just a check, yeah. right? <laughs> I'm having a really shitty day, all right? <laughs> no, 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 19. Okay, how far are you guys zoomed out right now? Zoomed out on the map? Uh, I have the market and the field of triumph. That's my corner bit. Okay, just zoom out as far as you can because really something on the map. Um, so as your both of your hands shoot out, Hjalder's fist just grabs it j that much faster. However, before he gets full grip on the hilt, it shoots out. And there's a large map of water deep covering the side of the wall. It's more, more or less in a poster that has all kinds of lines and drawings on it that has certain guild ways, straight ways, preferred addresses. And the blade just shoots into the map at a point that I've just revealed to you. Um, Nicole, you can make me an inside check, and Hjalder, you can make me a wisdom save. A wisdom save, you say? Yes. Oh, that's not too bad. That's a 15 on my wisdom save. Well, that's a 20 on my insight. So, um, oh, Nicole, you reckon, um, or Callie, you reckon that this is a clear signal that your next answer will be found at the point of where the dagger impacted. Um, Hjalder, you suddenly find yourself in, um, quite a maelstrom of visions that are penetrating your mind. And you oh, nice and cozy. You see this. The fuck is this? Are you coming to your religion check? I love that saying the fuck is this gives you a yeah. check. Yeah. He uh he looks friendly. Uh fourteen on my religion. Okay. You know that this is Asmodeus, the king of hell, the lord of all hells, upholding the virtues of knowledge and torture. 
Corruption is his fame. He wears robes of studded, that are studded with the best rubies you could have ever found. Um, and one ruby could like finance an entire city. When he, f- when he fell from the heavens, he collided with the material plane and his wound ruptured open. And now these wounds do not close anymore. And every drop of blood that falls out of his body creates a new devil. It spawns a new devil. Um, he is uh, crisply known for a staff that he holds, a staff that is believed to have been manu- manufactured or smith, created from an actual shard of the hell itself. Um, and his followers usually smile in the face of the world while scheming behind closed doors to gain wealth and fame. Um, and before you get this vision completely under control, you see him there channeling lightning through his rod, all kinds of devils and creatures crawling around him, scraping in the floor, large nail prints leaving there. You see him deep inside the hell, but before you can take control of your vision, it fades away back into your mind, uh, and the only thing that, that remains is the dagger sticking in the map. A uh, quick question: The name of the guy again, because I was typing it and I uh, didn't get it. Asmodeus. Of the dude in the vision, Asmodeus. Asmo. Asmo. So was he holding Thank on you. to the? Uh, so as soon as I, I I I get my no. grips, I grab the dagger, or at least try to. Uh, you can you can simply pull it out. The moment you do that, you see like the the shine of the light that comes out of the, through the window. It just rolls that you've engraved um so you once again like you see the light roll i refer to him so miss i'll be following yes. you to the yawning portal i'll just let's say i'll hold on to the blade for now and when the demon invading horde visions stop and we see the magister you can have the blade Okay, I feel like uh, if you're seeing demons, I, again, feel like you're the one with the issue today. So maybe I should hold on to the blade. Uh, and I also feel like any visions you may have just had were probably meant for me, since it's my name on the blade. Okay, so, you just so tell me what you so saw. So Magist- Magister, no. vision, blade. No. Blade, yawning portal, done. Okay, I'll do you. Magister... Blade, whatever the fuck you want. Okay, blade, yawning portal, done. I take off for the nearest magister slash the yawning portal, whichever I find first. I will follow him, shouting that he stole my blade. (laughs) Well, then we're going to find the magister real quick. Probably, yeah. And also both die, because... They don't care. Oh, all right. <laughs> no, I, I pull I pull aside his friend that was working there, and I say, would you please come to the Magister with us and tell him that I had the receipt and you were willing to give me the dagger because I had the receipt? I'll tell him that myself. Come on. Okay, so do you actively pursue uh, to search for a Magister? Uh, or I, do you I, I, just go I, to the Yawning Portal and when you see one... You- no, I attempt to find a magister whilst yeah. moving. It's, it's actually towards. pretty easy to find a magister because Aha! you you can shoot. Uh, you can just yell out to the first patrol that you see that you need one. Summon ah, one, pretty there much you go. on the spot. Okay, that's uh, what I do. Okay, so uh, as you approach the first patrol of guards, uh, you ask for a magister, um, and almost out of nowhere, from a dark alleyway just around the corner. A large, thin, black-robed man steps out. Fantastic. Uh, so I immediately slightly bow my head. I go, great, Magister. We have a situation regarding this weapon. Uh, this woman here showed up to the forge with the receipt. Also explaining that she doesn't own the house where she got the receipt from. I want to Not confirm anymore. her identity before I give her the blade. As is my right, as a guildsmith. And what do you need the mediation before? Sorry, come again. I said, 
What do you need the mediation for a magister for? Uh, she doesn't want to cooperate in proving her identity, so I'm not he sure wants... I'm giving the weapon to the right person. He just wants some peace of mind, I think. I'm not quite sure. I know his, his friend at work told him to just give me the thing. Please also, she's not person. cooperating at all. How am I not cooperating? I'm right here. Took you long enough. Please end your squabbles and give me the receipt and the purchase order. I give him both the receipt and the purchase order. Okay. Um, he places his hand on the forehead of um, of Callie and casts a spell. Um, a spell that you recognize as a zone of truth. Um, he has... Are you the rightful owner of this receipt? Are you a mute? Yes. <laughs> and yes. <laughs> in that case, this case is done. He hands both the receipt and she the doesn't burn in holy radiant fire. <laughs> no. <laughs> Damn. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you so Thank much, you, Magister. Just... Sorry for bothering you. Ma'am, your weapon. Thank you. Uh, Thank I you hope so much, you still Magister. appreciate our service. I've been Yalder of the Finesmith Guild, and I'm very sorry for how this went. And I head back to the guild. Okay, the moment you turn around to head back to the guild, you feel this burning sensation that you are somehow connected through Morden with the blade. Oh yeah, I was also totally planning on following her, just waiting a bit at the guild before I do so. Okay. Since okay, I am so not very stealthy. <laughs> in the end, uh, you both head out to the yawning portal. Um, and that is where your session zero will end, because that is where we'll start with the entire group. This is the infamous wizard Kagran Kniferim. Thank you for watching. So 11. All hail, King of the Losers! <laughs> yeah.